Here's a new set of problems on differential forms. It introduces a, uh, a new operation, which is uh, it's using the notation of a star, the symbol of a star, but instead of um, a superscript, it's a prefix. It's an operator that acts on any form, and it turns out to be very, very useful. Um, so the way we can motivate it to start with is that we've got these two ways of, inter of converting a vector field into a form. One converts it to a one form, one converts it to a two form. You might think, well, maybe in R n there's going to be all kinds of different notations we're going to have to invent. Well, there's really this is really the more basic one that a vector field in a one form um, will always contain the same amount of information, although there's some subtleties about translating between them. They really have different properties. Um, but a one form and a two form won't always have. Or sorry, a vector field in a two form won't always have the same amount of information. In R4, for example, a, two, a two form has six components. Um, and so that's not going to be the same as four components for a vector field. So we're really going to kind of drop this. But before we drop it, we'll use it to motivate uh, at least the R3 case of the new operation star. OK. So um, let's go, let's look at this. Uh, our first definition, we'll get a better definition in a little bit. Our first definition is that the prefix star just exchanges the one form version of a vector field and the two form version. So on a one form, it produces the two form. On a two form, it produces the one form. And we're going to get away from the whole vector field stuff very soon, but this is a quick and dirty way to, to explain why we might want to do this. OK, so let's do some calculations based on that. Well, star dx, well, dx is just i tilde. That's where p is 1 and q and r are 0. And so we just put in p is 1, q and r is 0 here. OK, that's just dy, which dc. OK. And then similarly, star dy is going to be, you just match the q's. That's going to be dz, which dx. And then star dz is going to be dx, which dy. So notice it's the other two. We're taking one form and we're saying, what are the other two? And now this only works really well in R3, but these are all in cyclic order. Um, we're going to see another more interesting way to say that that's more general in a minute. OK, what about star of the two forms? OK, well, that just translates back. Um, and again, that's going to be something that's a little trickier in, uh, in the higher dimensions. But uh, for this case, we just take dy dz and we translate it back into a dx. And then star dz dx is just going to be dy. And then star dx dy is just going to go back to dz. dz, OK. Now here's where it, we get a hint of the nice properties that this is going to have. dx wedge star dx, well, that's easy to do. dx wedge star dx, we just put those together. That's dx wedge dy wedge dz. Oh, we have a, a notation for that. That's just dv. It's the volume form, the standard uh, unit volume form in, in R3. OK. Well, what about dy wedge star dy? Same thing happens. Um, here, the cyclic order is really nice. dy star dy is dz wedge dx. So dy wedge dz wedge dx, well, that's in cyclic order. That's still dv. Aha. OK. And in fact, the same is true. You can check. Oh, that's supposed to be a z. Just kidding. Mm, that's not good. Sometimes I copy and paste and I forget to change it. OK, and it's easy to check that that's dv as well. Well, what if you start with a two form, and then you uh, star it, and then you wedge it with its own star? That looks really complicated, but it's not, because it's just dy wedge dz wedge, and then with the one form, and that's dx. <coughs> now look, that's still in cyclic order, so that's still dv. And then, the, in fact, the rest, those both equal dv as well. It's easy to check. OK. So that you can, might come up with a conjecture. <clears throat> maybe for any one form, star uh, alpha, like alpha wedge star alpha, maybe it's always dv. Well, think about it for, for a minute. OK. Let's just try alpha equals 2dx, as I suggest. If you take 2dx, put a little space in there, and you wedge it with star of 2dx, well, the 2's are going to come out. Both of them are going to come out. You're going to get 4 dx wedge star dx, but that is equal to dv. So it's not true 
that it's just always equal to dv. You might get a factor. Mm, okay, so we have to we actually have to look look at this. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is I'm going to take not just alpha wedge star alpha. I'm going to take alpha wedge star beta, some other one form. So I'm going to take a one form and I'm going to take another one form. I'm going to star this guy to create a two form, and that's nice because when we wedge them together, just like we were doing up here, we get always the same thing. We get a top form. We get a d uh, something dv. Okay, so alpha wedge star beta. Okay, so the PDX plus QDY plus RDZ is, follows the same pattern. It just turns into PDYDZ, et cetera. So I'm just going to steal that from up here. I don't think I have to modify that. Okay. And then wedge. Oh, whoops. Sorry, just kidding. Uh, that's going to be, it's the beta that's getting the star. I forgot that alpha wasn't even starred. Okay, so that will be the second thing. And then uh, alpha is just this guy. and put a wedge in here. Okay, so alpha wedge star beta is this whole thing. Now, a lot of that dies. dx wedge dz wedge dx, that dies. The dx wedge dx wedge dy, that dies. The only things that don't die are where they're different. So pa times dx wedge dy wedge dz, hey, that's a dv, surprise, surprise. qb, aha, uh -huh. and rc times dv. Now that looks very interesting. That looks like a dot product. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to define the dot product of alpha and beta, just like as if they were vectors with these being i, i, j, and k. And we'll just define that to be the dot product of alpha and beta times dv. So we just, this is not a def definition we've used before. We just defined the dot product of two one forms in kind of the obvious way. Uh, one way to say that is we're treating dx, dy, and dz as orthonormal quantities. That they, when I dot them with each other, they die. And when I dot, dot dx with dx, you get one. If you treat them that way, then this, is, this will be the formula for the dot product. So that's a scalar function. When you get out, take alpha wedge star beta, you don't just get the scalar function alpha dot beta. You get that times the volume form. That turns out to be very useful because it turns out to be very, very common to want to integrate this over a, a region or over all space sometimes. And um, you can not integrate a function. We've talked about that before. But you can integrate a function times dv, in other words, a top dimensional form. OK. So let's check this guy. What if they were actually two forms? OK. What if you had this? So I'm going to take this whole mess. Oh, first, let's what it's supposed to be calculating. So alpha wedge star beta in this case, OK. And then I'm going to wedge. Now the star of beta here is the old version of beta, the one form version. The dy wedge dz just turns back into a dx, etc. OK. And then I get a very similar calculation. The dy wedge dz only matches up with the x. The dz wedge dx only matches up with the dy. I get exactly the same thing, plus qb. Whoop plus rc dv, which could still, you could still say, OK, let's define the dot product of two two forms to say that this and this dot to be 1, and so you're going to get a contribution of pa, and this and this dot to be 0, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're just going to define that to be exactly this again. OK. So that's a, basically defining the dot product of two two forms. And so it's saying that really the star come together with the wedge, that's pretty cool. It's encoding the dot product, um, the very, a very natural notion of dot product on one forms or two forms. OK. So now here's, uh, we even can go further with this, not just between one and two forms. It turns out the star really sort of turns everything upside down. It turns a one form to a two form and vice versa. And it turns a zero form to a three form and vice versa in a very, very simple way. We know, we've seen this already, that it's useful to take a function and just turn it into f times dv. And then sometimes we take a function times dv, a three form, and just strip off the function part. That's what star does. It either puts in the dv or takes it out, depending. OK. Now, really easy is we can show that the same property, if I take two things of the same degree, like two zero forms, I star one of them, 
and then I wedge it together, I'm always going to get a, um, a volume form, a three form. And this guy, well, it's kind of pretty obvious. It's not, there's nothing much to prove here. It's F, wedge, and then the definition is G, D, V. And then I can just collect the two things together. And I don't usually write a wedge product when i am just got a zero form. Okay. And then similarly, if I started with a three form, and another three form, and I wedge that, and I star that to become a function, then that just strips off the G. And that, again, it's just almost nothing to it. That's just going to be F dV wedge G. And that's just a fancy way of saying F G dV. OK, so this property, so this kind of looks like the dot product of two numbers. It really is, or scalar functions. To, for scalar functions, the, dot, the equivalent of the dot product is just multiply them together. And then here, uh, if I have f dv and g dv, I could define the, the, the dot product of two three forms to just say, OK, multiply the coefficients. There's just one of them. I don't need a sum like we did in these cases. And so this general, general thing is that um, alpha wedge star beta is turning out to be alpha dot beta times dv for all cases. Okay. Now here's a funky thing. Star uh, takes a, a p form to a three minus p form. So star takes um, a p for the space of p forms and takes it to in in three dimensions three minus p forms. I'll put parentheses. And you might guess that in n dimensions, what, what the version of this would be. Okay, And so if you do it twice, you're going to get back to where you started uh, in terms of what kind of form it is. Do you get back to exactly the same thing that you started with? Well, it's not too hard to see. From the way we defined it up here for, for, uh, form, for one forms and two forms, it's pretty clear that it just comes back to where you started. It just exchanges the star and the tilde. Similarly, for three forms, you either put on a dv or take it off. And so in this case, star star alpha is actually alpha. Okay. However, here's a warning. This does not work exactly the same way in other dimensions. Okay. It turns out in even dimensions, we get some minus signs. Okay. Um, and that's going to be we're going to see that in R four. Although I don't know if I wrote a problem up specifically about that. Okay. So that's a little introduction to star, at least in three dimensions. Now we're going to want to go to a higher dimension, because I have a particular interest in making this stuff work in four dimensions. Um, so now uh, we are still going to use the tilde. If we need to compare back to vector calculus with vector fields, we're still going to use the tilde. Okay. But now we do not need to use, if we go back up, we do not need to use this. Because we're really thinking of that as just star of f tilde. It's a really, it's a more sophisticated way, a better way, a more general way to think about it. Okay. So for example, here's problem two. Take a look at that and pause the video if, and work it out if you want. Okay. What we can do is we can take a vector field, turn it into a one form, and then instead of doing d on it, we want to get some calculus back in here. Instead of doing d on it right away, we could star it to create a two form. That's basically just f upper star, what we used to call it. Then we take d of that. That's going to act in a different way, because d is, in, in principle, the same operation somehow, but it works very differently in coordinates in different degrees. And then we'll star it again to create, what, well, let's see what, is what we're going to get. This is a one form. This is a two form. d of that will be a three form. And then star of that will be a zero form. Okay, So this should be a function created out of a vector field. Okay, we have seen. Uh, let me just recall something real quick. Recall that d f tilde without the stars was basically the curl. It was implementing the curl of f. Although I had to be a little more careful, I had to say, well, it's a, it's the upper star version of that. Okay, so um, star shift eight. So what about if you put a star in front before you do the D, and then a star afterwards? What is that going to be? OK, well, let's just try it out. Star D, we want to expand it out from the inside of, OK, PDX plus QDY plus RDZ. That's up here somewhere. 
Uh, control V. There we go. Okay. Uh, whoops. Star. Okay. Um, and so star D of. Oh yeah. That's just the other guy. That's just F star. And this should look familiar. We've looked at already already exactly how star how D works on a two form. If you remember what happened, that was exactly just. Um, partial p partial x plus partial q partial y partial r partial z the divergence of the original vector field times dv so that's recalling an earlier result and then all we're doing now is we're stripping off the dv that's what the other star does well that's just nothing more or less than the divergence of the vector field f so this is another way to state that D can embody the divergence as well as the curl. But it's, uh, it's a little slicker. That's this combination star D star turns out to be really cool. Um, D increases degree by one. What happens here is that always star will flip things up by, upside down, then I increase degree by one, and then I flip again upside down uh, in terms of the, the ranking of degrees. Well, that's always going to decrease the degree by one. So we took a one form and produced a function out of it. And it turns out that that's the divergence. So this is actually a very nice way to think of the divergence as star d star. Okay, that's a good place to stop this video. And then we're going to go on to R4 and Rn.